Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody between I and the pixelated amalgamation of the adventure game enthusiast known as some guy. And I'm here to do a walkthrough slash over analysis of Undercover Mission's Curse. I'm on chapter 4. Let's see what's going on now, folks. So to get you guys up to speed, we've been arrested. And now we're in the leisure room. Because I guess I don't have a brig on this sub. And also, I don't find it to be all that surprising that we were arrested. Considering the fact that I don't think we were supposed to be on the ship once it left port. But oh well, we in jail now. How the hell are we going to get out, you ask? Hey, we got one of our files back somehow. Wait a minute, they were all gone from our desk, and now we have one. How the hell did we get this file? We also have a toothbrush and, like, a ruble or something. But I'm still very perplexed as to why we have the file. Oh well, let's try to figure out how to get out of here. So as best as I can tell, click on everything and look at everything, and you'll hear some stuff about things coming out of her mouth. At first glance, they seem to be very busy with their card game and their musical shop talk, but I know they're watching me like vultures watch a parched man. So yeah, just keep on clicking on everything or just wait around until something happens. I'm not sure what to do here. But eventually, something happens. Get out. Both. Disappear. I, Comrade Korobalnikov. I sound like a robot. Yeah, I don't mind a toothbrush on screen. I was just using the old adventure game technique of rubbing every item up against every other item and hoping something would happen. When indeed something did happen, but before I could put the toothbrush back on my bar. Mrs. Oh, well, how should I refer to you? You're definitely not Tatiana Sokolova. Excuse me, I had to take a few things from you. A sailing order, previously stolen by you, for example. I surely apologize for keeping you imprisoned here. But as long as I do not know who you are and what you really do here, it seems that it is the best thing to do. What you really do here, yeah. That might as well be the title of this episode. Oh wait, it is now. Well, let's go ahead and take a better look at this officer. Otherwise, we're just gonna stand here awkwardly. I can see a card in his officer's jacket. I might need it. My safety? Obviously, there is someone on board who does not like you, right? And, if you will open up a little about yourself, I might let you out. So, who are you? And what are you doing here? And how do I know that you are not the one who wants me dead? You don't want to tell me. Good. I didn't actually expect anything else. In this case, you stay locked up here. Well, he gave up on that interrogation pretty quick. I'll be back in a few days. Perhaps the captivity will loosen your tongue more. You know, I have no idea what the Geneva Convention's protocols are towards people being locked in leisure rooms. Frankly, it sounds like we're gonna have a very relaxing time in here. Well, at least until the sub blows up. Hey, that's not a spoiler. The game's own title's a spoiler. We all know what happens to the curse. So obviously, we're gonna try to avoid our fate by escaping from here. Because nobody wants to be exploded on. Before I forget, I brought you something so that you do not get bored. Singing makes happy. Goodbye. Oh man, that's a better title for this episode. Singing Makes Happy. I definitely need it to get around here. Oh, we apparently took the keycard out of his pocket. Man, we a damn ninja. I didn't see anything happening at all. It must have all transpired while the screen faded to black. Yeah, that's probably it. But anyway, now we still gotta get out of here. And you wanna know how we do that? Why, by giving the sheet music to one guy and the furry guitar to the other. And then before you know it, the boys start jamming. I have a balalaika. Unfortunately, I am hopelessly unmusical. But perhaps one of you can play. Great! Thanks a lot. That is very kind. Yes, both of us love music. Well, these boys are really feeling it. They've started a jam band. And now that they're distracted, we can go over here to this little med box and take some sleeping pills out of it. Wait for the right moment. Ah, what have we here? Scissors? No. Bandages. Yeah. Iodine. Probably not. Sleeping pills. Well, well.
Well, that wasn't too painful to listen to. Now we have sleeping pills. The only item kept in this little medical box. Why do they just keep sleeping pills in here? I don't know. Maybe they need something to chase their drinks down with. Because that's what we gotta do now, folks. We need to get these guys to give us some cold brews, and then we need to spike their drinks. And we do that by interacting with the fridge. Gentlemen, I'm thirsty. Did your mother not teach you to never let a lady suffer thirst? There is almost nothing left. I wanted to get some more anyway. So let's go ahead and spike their drinks while they're away. And yeah, after you spike the drinks, you have to kind of mill around for a while. Because, well, that's how this game works. Although I do wonder... Is this leisure room still being used for leisure, even though it's a prison? Do the guys just come and go and wonder why we're hanging out in here and don't leave ever? Hmm. Oh, they're back. Here we are again. Let's refill the refrigerator and get some fresh drinks. Come on, miss. Now, you would expect these guys to walk over to their drinks and, you know, grab them or at least stand near them. But no, one's just hanging out by the door, the other's hanging out by the fridge. Now, you may think you have to trigger something here to get them to actually drink the drinks. But no, you just kind of have to mill about for a while. And then through the power of, I don't know, lack of animation, they just pass out without ever once touching the tainted glasses. Huh. I didn't think this medication would work so fast, but I don't object. So I tried to search the bodies, but didn't pick up anything. And I just left the room. So I guess they left the door unlocked when they brought in the drinks. Okay, we can go with that. I need to try to contact Colonel Bobrov. Maybe we are not too deep down and the military phone works. So obviously something super exciting happened in the weapons officer's room. Hell, someone broke the damn vent he was hiding his gun in. That can't be a good sign. But first things first, we're gonna need to pick up a bunch of stuff from here. Perhaps Korobelnikov has the remaining things kept in that locked safe. What locked safe are you talking about? Oh, it's probably the one overhead. Well, we didn't even look at that, so... Okay, we know we need to get into the safe. But then again, this is an adventure game, so we know we pretty much need to get into anything that's locked. Those are the orders that Korobelnikov has taken from me. I'll take a closer look at them. I just love how everyone leaves out crucial documents just to be had. you think the man would have kept that in his safe, but maybe he forgot the combination. A screwdriver is always handy. I will need the- Yeah, we need the screwdriver and the keys. That damn screwdriver has traveled all over the sub. And is that done traveling yet? So now what do we do? Well, remember those documents that we grabbed off the desk? We're gonna need to take a closer look at them. So this is a little frustrating mini game right here. It's spot the 10 differences between the two documents. And there are named little things like, oh, this line's slightly off. Oh, this anchor's filled in. Oh my God, it's painful and frustrating and not very fun at all. And it took me a good long while to spot all the differences. Yeah, yeah, this is not fun at all, folks. Not fun at all. And pause the video here if you just wanted a copy of the solution. Here you go, folks. Walk through. One of these sailing orders seems to be faked. The route has been changed on the fake order. Yeah, don't say. Then why the hell did we need to spot ten different differences when we could have noticed that one key difference? Hell, that was the only key difference we really needed to know. Oh, talk about filler. It seems like some developers have been playing too many hidden object games. The target location of the Kursk is a place very close to the coast of Norway. Shallow waters, an optimal place to access the Kursk. This looks like the usual operation from Vori. Oh, you don't say. Those Vore guys, they're going to try to steal the curse for reasons that I do not comprehend. Why the hell do they want to steal a sub? How the hell are you going to unload a sub on the black market? This, what, what, they're going to strip it down for parts? Even then, why this sub? This is like the flagship of the Russian Navy. You'd think that, well, uh, that's a problem right there, isn't it? I'm thinking about this plot too much. We're going to take everything at face value because that's how this thing's written. This mission is a disaster. Piece of shit. All are incapable idiots. That might be the voice actor ad-libbing a little bit after he read the script. Ossip, this damn weirdo. What was he thinking stealing the old weapon system boards and drawing attention to us? Yeah, what was he thinking? I, I really don't know why he did that. Why was any of that necessary? Why did he take the weapon boards? Why do we even care that he took the weapon boards? I mean, I'm at a loss here, folks. The finer details of this game's plot's just going over my head. Uh, I can strangle him ten times for this bullshit. And then suddenly, 
This old man shows up in Ossip's apartment. This brute, crazy man sniffing around. We lost three of our men and one is now uglier than Kosuke the Deathless. Oh, they're talking about our partner there, I guess. I, I still don't know what's going on. What what do they even want on the sub? I'm, I'm still really confused about that. Maybe it's just some generic Ocean's Eleven type heist. You know, it's just personal between them and the Russian military at this point. And then, Kona Belnikov and this stupid woman. If she is not from the military intelligence or the FSB, I'll eat my hat. I wonder if they know each other. We have to do something, Arkady. The captain wants to emerge and discuss the sailing order with the Ministry. We cannot let that happen. Should I go bring them down? Oh, unknown my ass. Game, you do not forget a distinct voice like that. That was the very same dude that was down in the air control room, or whatever the hell it's called, fixing the door after we broke it trying to escape being poisoned to death. It's a very distinct voice, Game. I did not forget it. And also, too, this weapons officer, God, I hope it's a weapons officer, but nevertheless, this dude said his damn name. I need Corner Belnikov alive. Knock him down, but he needs to survive. Why? Why, why, why? Are you just trying to be Bond villains at this point and keep the heroes alive for inane stupid reasons? No need to spare her. And how? Doesn't matter. We should no longer care about making it look like an accident. In the end, nothing from this ship will be left. Understand. I have to stop Sobolev. He's dangerous. I need a weapon. Oh no, our life's on the line. But fortunately for us, the two guys that want to kill us aren't going to leave this room until we assemble the necessary items. You're probably wondering, Guy, what are those necessary items? Well, first things first, we need to get the scalpel from the sick bay. But it's not as easy as it sounds. Damn, the doctor and his assistant. You know, it's funny. If you look at the map, the torpedo rooms open up. There's absolutely no reason to go there at all. There's quite literally nothing to do other than look at everything in there. It's a pointless room, a red herring, just like some of the items I have in my inventory. My god, this game. So many red herrings and false leads. I wonder if it's intentional or just puzzles they couldn't finish. I don't know, but what I do know is it's how to get a doctor out of the room. Ooh, that was a smooth transition, I hope. So now we're back in our prison cell, I mean the leisure room. And we gotta look at this little hockey table. There is something under the table. Aha! A cloth. Yes, indeed. It's always fun when a crucial item spawns into existence after you've thoroughly looked at everything. Oh, so much fun, game. Yes? Dr. Bakajin? Of course. Who else? We have an emergency in the turbine section. What happened? Steam spewed out of the valve and scalded Fyodor's upper body and arms. Looks bad. So, he should be busy for at least 15 minutes. Yeah, we're so excited we double hung up that phone. And now we can steal the scalpel because I guess the assistant went with him too. Oh well, it did sound like a legitimate medical emergency. They probably needed a couple of bodies down there. Small, but powerful. And that's what she said about my genitals. <laughs> I'm just trying to lighten the mood, folks. So you're probably wondering, now what, guy? Now what? What do I do? Well, we still have that damn safe to crack in the weapons officer's room. So let's go ahead and solve that by just giving you the damn combination. Now, if you're wondering how I figured that combination out, you see there's a photo in the same room. And if you look at it three times, the lady's like, oh, there's a bunch of numbers left here. But the last two are left out. So the safe's passcode is those numbers. And then just you guessing until you get the final two right. There's no other way to solve this puzzle, folks. Yeah, that just seems a little bit like lazy puzzle design to me. It's like, oh, here's a hint. We'll just leave the last two numbers off and boom, we got a challenging puzzle. There you are. Done. A wild collection of numbers. Let's see if I can use that. So armed with a bunch of pointless numbers and a scalpel, we are still not 100% done yet. You see, we don't have enough weapons to take on two guys. We need another one, like say a monkey wrench. But how the hell do you find a monkey wrench on a sub? Well, probably in a toolbox, or just by clicking on a vent three times. I don't know what to do. What's there? I see something red, line. I don't know what to do. A pipe wrench. It's a pipe wrench lying on the floor. Well, better than nothing. Should be enough. 
back to back terrible puzzles yeah just keep clicking on this one object here just keep doing it guys and you'll get a crucial item no not the first click no 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 you have to click on it a bunch of times then eventually the lady realizes the key items there yeah that's incredibly frustrating incredibly frustrating because you know how many times i clicked on this damn vent before i realized that she changed her dialogue a lot more than i care to admit why the hell would i ever want to click on this vent organically i mean the only reason why i did it is because i was quite honestly just clicking and clicking and clicking on everything you know if i wasn't a patient man i probably would have given up on this game a long time ago because this is not fun puzzle design at all folks but frustrating puzzles aside, we're armed and dangerous now. We got a scalpel, we got a monkey wrench, so let's go ahead and bust some heads. Sobolev is not here. I'd better wait for him. If I'm lucky, I might knock him out with these heavy pliers. We don't have pliers, we have a goddamn wrench, and also, also, that means assembling all these weapons was utterly pointless. <laughs> Alright, let's loot the room, folks, cause we here now. A piece of paper. Wait a minute. There's something written on it. The code is hidden. Well, fine. And where? Well, actually, you know what's funny? Hidden's the password for the safe. Yeah, if you have like one of those old school phones that has like the alphanumeric thing on it, you spell it out that way, you know? H is a four, I is a four, D and E are E's, and then N is six. So yeah. <sighs> I guess I gave you a hint at least. Still a bit of a frustrating puzzle. And if you're wondering how the hell did you solve that guy, I was just going through puzzle archetype and hoping it was one of them. Because I've seen puzzles like this before. Not that I like them, but I've seen them before. Normally they actually put the, you know, letters on the pin pad. So you kind of had some hint about what you're supposed to do. But yeah, I just flat out guessed this. And it turns out I was right. Right on target. Those were the right numbers. Let's see what this officer is hiding. Oh look, it's a gas mask mini game. How fun. So naturally we gotta assemble this. Not very tricky at all, thank god. Finally. Done. What is happening? It smells like earlier in the air treatment unit. That is fire extinguishing gas. Damn, something's on fire. I assembled the gas mask just in time. <coughs> I must find out what happened, and where the fire is. The smoke seems to be coming from the direction of the radio and server room. <coughs> well, at least our frustration's rewarded with some measure of excitement. Now let's go see what the hell's going on in the radio room. Fire! I need to extinguish it right now! So what we're gonna wanna do here is grab the blanket on the chair, but then the lady's like, nah, I ain't gonna use it, the power's still on. So what we gotta do is open up this locker over here and... I guess just press on the fuse box, and yeah, that turns off the power, and then we can use the blanket on the fire. The sailor has a lighter and a small canister with accelerant beside him. If he is the criminal, I should make sure he doesn't get away. I have to extinguish the fire first. And we also gotta tie him up with a pipe we found laying around and some zip ties that were in the locker. And boom! We've incarcerated a man, kind of, while well, we tied him up. With the zip ties, I can tie the sailor to the pipes. Be good and stay here, yes? Well, damn, that was quick. Now we're on to chapter five. I wonder what's going to happen there. I actually beat chapter five, so I do know what's going to happen. More of the same. So hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.